Welcome to Seashore Art School. I'm a mermaid. I'm Fiona Fishfinger. I live here under the Erskine Bridge. Today we're going to look how to turn blobs and scribbles into a flock of birds and, or a shoal of plankton. But first, let's visit Lucy. Oh, hello everyone. Today I'm looking at a really old library book. My mummy bought this from Paisley Central Library when they had a book sale. It's got drawings in it by Ronald Searle. And I really love how he's turned these old bits of leaf into pictures of birds. <laughs> I'd really like to try it, but oh, I don't know if I could. I know. I'm going to go and show this book to my mummy. Mum! Oh, I think I'll have to take it to her, won't I? Let's go! Mum, look at my funny book. That's a lovely book, Lucy. That artist has used pen and ink. Oh, that makes a lovely mark. Would you like to do that today? I have some big pieces of paper we could copy his drawings. Did we? I couldn't find any big paper yesterday. I wanted to paint a giant parrot fish. Oh, Lucy, I've got some larger pieces of paper somewhere. Oh, dear. What's wrong? Oh, it seems to have marks on it. Lucy, have you been dancing about with a paintbrush? Uh, yes. Uh, making muddy footprints indoors? Yes. And putting drippy hot chocolate cups down? Sorry. Then that's splendid. Huh? It's a happy accident, Lucy. Perfect for experimenting with doodles. <laughs> that's what the surrealist artists used to do. Let's get doodling. We can add scribbles or we can create our own new starting points. Hmm? I'll show you what I mean. Today you will need some blobs and marks. You can do blobs of paint or fingerprints or anything you like. Something to draw with. I got a piece of charcoal on the end of a stick, just like that lovely Henri Matisse used to have, so he could draw from a distance. It's great fun. Now let's begin. Why not do a little scribble And say what you see, what could it be? Many things to you And some different things to me When I see a scribble I give a little giggle Sometimes a scribble is just a scrubbly mess but really use your eyes, you might get a nice surprise The scribble needs a birdie Because it's actually a nest Oh, thank you! Why not do a little doodle And say what you see, what could it be? Many things to you And some different things to me a scribble can be kind, it can open up your mind To possibilities in ones, twos or threes You can scribble for a week, it'll all be unique You'll see things in your scribble That no one else has seen So let's have a little scribble And say what we see, what could it be? things to you and some different things to you and you and me there's so many different things to see <laughs> some of my doodles were successful some were better than others but they were all fun to do now, let's have a look at inventing our own sea creatures, tiny ones that swim in the deep. 
And now it's time to do scribble doodles. For this task, you need some black paper, some glue, some scissors, some leaves, and some wax crayons. And after that, we're going to add some white chalk and white ink or white paint and some coloured pencils. So let's make a start. The first thing we're going to do is make a rubbing of our leaves. Now, to do that, we're going to have to use a bit of thin white paper, which I didn't mention, did I, on my list of things we need. So let's grab some of that. So all you do is you put your piece of paper over your leaf and then get a crayon and rub over it, keeping the, the leaf still in position underneath by pressing down slightly like that. Oh, I've my crayon. Oh, and I've knocked over my glue. Oh dear, I'm in a tizzle, am I? There we go. So I've got a nice rubbing of a leaf there. Do as many of those as you can and then cut them out. Here we go. There's some I've done before. So let's glue them onto our paper and get started with designing our very own plankton. <laughs> Is a drawing of two different types of leaf that I picked from the garden. This is a Herb Robert and he's turned into a limpet and he's a limpet disguised as a Herb Robert and this one is probably a privet leaf and he's the crab-eating bird who can't swim and I just did another portrait of him which you saw. So let's frame him now with this little piece of black card, slot it into our hinges just like an old-fashioned photo album and we've collected our very own botany specimens. There we are. And finally, one last thing if you'd like to do this, is make a little book of your plankton. Just get a piece of uh, paper, nice and long and thin, fold it in half, and then fold the two back like that. And now you've got a little book, you see, with those pages there, it goes all around. And you can use it to collect your botany samples. Here's one I already started. It's called Fragrant Leaves from My Plankton Finds, Mrs. Catherine Crayon. And I've put in here some of the doodles and the leaf design that I've already drawn. And what you can do is you can cut out from your sheet that you already made. Mom, please can I finish the book? Of course you can, Lucy. I'll put your pictures in, but I don't want to cut my plankton page up. Lovely. See you in a bit. And now it's time for Kathy's Smarty Arty Party. Did you like that ink and stick? Ronald Searle is a favourite artist of mine. He was a master of pen and ink and his drawings are so expressive and funny. He drew all the time, even when he was taking prisoner in the war. He did his sneaky drawings, rolled them up and hid them inside bamboo sticks. He donated all his drawings after the war of his captured friends and the prisoner guards to the Imperial War Museum. 
Ronald Searle later said that the drawings inspired one of his most famous creations, the School of Centrinians and all the cheeky children that go there. He found humour and recorded humanity from one of the hardest times in his life. Why don't you look up his drawings online or in your local library and copy a picture? You'll have such a lovely time. You can use watered-down paint if you don't have any ink. And another artist I love is Eileen Agar. When I see her work, it makes me happy and makes me want to do lovely paintings too. In 1939, she did a picture called Fish Circus with a starfish and some fish in it and some painted collage. It's half a picture, it's half a box full of things. It's a collage, which means sticking pictures down and then draw on top to create a whole new picture. You can visit that actual painting in the Scottish Gallery of Modern Art in Edinburgh. Eileen was a surrealist, and the surrealists played wonderful drawing games, like doing ink splots, happy accidents, and seeing what they looked like and changing them into something else, just like our scribble doodles. Or they played the game Exquisite Corpse, where you take it in turns to add a bit to a drawer and make a funny creature. Lucy, should we start a game off and send it to Fiona Fishfinger to finish? Yeah, um, how do you play? Each person has a piece of paper and a pencil. They each draw a head or face of the top third of the paper and then leave a little clue for the next person of where the neck should be, like this. And then they pass it on to the next person who adds the body and some funny things in the background if they want to. And they leave a couple of little lines as clues for where the legs go. And then the last person does the final part, the legs and the bottom half. And then you open up the picture to see what you created. Yay! Let's post ours to Fiona. She's down at the Erskine Bridge. It'll be fun for her to try something new. Oh, have you finished the plankton book? Here it is. Oh, that's lovely. I'm going to have a little look at this. Oh, but first we better go and post that drawing, hadn't we? Yes. OK. Oh, that was really fun doing a squibble picture. I did a weird little razor clam with an anglerfish's head and I did a spooky exploding blue creature coming out of a leaf. I like my plankton designs. I hope you enjoy doing some plankton designs. Bye! Hello. Well, I hope you enjoy your scribble, scribble pictures. I've got a very strange picture in the post with instructions to add whatever bottom I like to it and then unfold it. Well, I accidentally spilled my seaweed tea on it and had to turn it into some flippers so let's have a look gosh that looks like my cousin johnson he's a plankton i did like kathy's page of plankton did you plankton produces 50 percent of the earth's oxygen it is a vital source of food for larger marine life phytoplankton is plants and zooplankton is tiny animals i'd better send this back to kathy and lucy hadn't i if you try this game at home we'd love to see what you you do if you'd like to send us a photo of it the address is coming up next goodbye mm -hmm.